Hello everyone, I'm Svetlin Nakov. Today I will be talking about how to start your first developer job, your first job in the software industry. And I'll share some tricks and tips uh, from my uh, experience because I'm teaching software engineers in the last uh, 15 years or maybe more. And I have a lot to share with you. So maybe most of you know me very well because I'm well known in Bulgaria and in the software industry as a software engineer, technical trainer, entrepreneur and inspirer of um, thousands of people to uh, learn programming and start a tech job. I'm writing tech books uh, on coding, software technologies and others. And I'm the main person behind several software academics uh, like the Telerik Academy in the past and currently the Software University, SoftUni, which gives a profession and jobs to, to many hundreds of thousands of young people. And I helped many people to learn programming and start a job. And this is what I want to share with you because I really... Um, I really think that I know many things. So basically, the recipe to start a developer job uh, consists of the following goals. You first should decide about the profession you want to learn. For example, Java developer or QA engineer or other. The next step is to learn coding and software technologies and everything required to be uh, ready for your first job. To learn the profession, this takes about one, two or three years of hard uh, learning. The next thing is to build a portfolio of projects in GitHub. I will explain all of these steps in details a little bit later, but the portfolio is quite ex important because this is the proof that you have some experience, that you have some skills, that you have a um, proven track record of writing code with certain technologies, etc. Portfolio is even more important than your CV. And the next step is to find junior positions to apply for, positions which are good for you, positions which match your skills and uh, which match your dreams about uh, what you want. So there are many ways to find such position and uh, but basically the job offers in the job at portals and um, channels like friends works very well. After you find the position you want to apply, uh, most people directly try to apply and then say send a CV and they get rejected. Why? Because they re don't read the requirements and because they don't add skills to match these requirements. Every job has uh, certain requirements which you should definitely match in order to apply. If you don't match the requirements, there is no... Um, it's no sense to apply for a position where you are not the right candidate. Apply means to prepare and send a job application, which basically consists of application message, CV and cover letter. And I will give you my tricks and tips about this. But the previous steps are more important. Interview is not quite important. Why? Because 95% of job applications never go to an interview. If you pass to, the, to this step, you're lucky and yes, you should put effort to prepare yourself in the best way. But the previous steps are quite, quite, quite more important because most people will never go to interview in their first 20 attempts. And finally, you should survive uh, uh, during your trial period if you get uh, a, a successful, if you successfully start a job and you should just keep your motivation and perform uh, m better than expected. So I will start with the first step. The first step is about defining your career goals. Uh, to, you should answer the questions, what profession I want to learn and how you decide what profession to learn. My suggestions here is first to research the job market, to learn about the most wanted tech professions and to uh, ask yourself, is this for you? Do I like Java or do I like Python more or do I like QA 
or I prefer front end, or yeah, I prefer back end. First, you should know all of these things. What is Java, what is JavaScript, what is Python, etc. The next thing is to research the job market, to talk with friends, to talk with experts, and to, to take some advices from them. You should definitely play with different languages and technologies. You can follow tutorials, you can watch videos in YouTube, you can run examples. You should try it, not just read or talk with people, but you should try it and you should feel yourself. Is this for you or it's not for you? So what is exciting and motivational and inspirational for you? Uh, when I start playing with Java, for example, and Android, uh, I'm really excited and do I uh, forget to, to, to get some food? If the answer is yes, this is a good uh, sign. So, very, very important thing, what the market needs. If the market needs Java, you should not learn PHP or, for example, Swift. This is just an idea. So, how to do this? You can open LinkedIn jobs, for example, and say Java Worldwide is just an indication. 1.7 million jobs for Java. But you should only consider junior positions because you don't, you cannot match the others. So we have 100,000 for Java. For JavaScript, it is similar. Uh, junior JavaScript looks like something is, is broken here because they cannot be only 6,000 and junior java are one no no this is incorrect find another space for example and also consider the location for example if you live in bulgaria junior java is 265 junior for example python uh, it's less needed than java so your chance to start java uh, as a java developer is quite better in bulgaria than with python so if you want to be successful, Java would be better. If you try PHP, it's not quite needed in Bulgaria, right? So do a research, find the local uh, sources and research. Next, once you decide, once you try, once you are uh, decide what to learn, just learn it. Just learn it. it takes two years or three years. It's very, it's the biggest uh, part of your uh, process of starting a job to prepare, to get the skills, to learn the programming, the concepts, the platforms, the frameworks, the tools. So you should learn the basic concepts of coding, programming, language uh, of your choice. For example, let's consider Java. You should uh, learn the algorithmic thinking, how to solve problems in Java, how to write code, how to debug code, how to work with arrays, with streams, with uh, uh, object-oriented programming and many others. You should learn development concepts like front-end, back-end, like databases, like ORM and many others. And the software developments, platforms, frameworks, tools, etc., which will also be required for your um, development profession. And this, you have many choices to learn. The best um, choices are to attend a code camp. Uh, sometimes you may have preliminary knowledge. For example, you may uh, have some skills from school, additional skills from your university. If it's not quite bad, uh, you could also follow some tutorials when you were a child. Uh, you can read some books. Can, you can attend some video courses, for example, at Udemy or YouTube. But the most important thing is to practice, 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 practice. And the only thing which makes sense and it's important when you apply to for a job is how many experience or practice you have. This is the only most important question that uh, employers will ask. How many time you have spent coding in Java? How many experience you have? One year, two years, five years, ten years. And if you don't have experience, you are not the right candidate and you will not go to interview. So hands-on exercises, tutorials, projects are the most important thing you should do once you start worrying. It takes 
two or three years. For some people, it may take even more at part time, which means that you do your daily job or you study at the university or you work and at the supermarket. And in the same time, you learn programming for four hours a day. If you spend 12 hours a day, which means that you do, don't do anything else, uh, and this may take less, for example, six months or 12 months or something like this. But typically, two or three years are enough to get a junior position. If someone thinks that this should take three months, okay, try something else. In three months, if you are a complete beginner, even if you are smart, it's impossible to get enough skills to start a junior tech job. So, learn by doing. Remember from me, learn by doing, which means that to learn programming, you should program, you should write code, you should um, do bugs, you should debug, you should uh, write, uh, solve problems, you should have mistakes, you should correct them, etc., etc., etc. So, just watching videos or conference talks, it gives you only knowledge. Today, I'll give you knowledge. But once you start doing it, once you start practicing it, once you start following my guidelines, you will get skills. So, the, uh, employers need skills. Solving hands-on exercises helps a lot. And solving, for example, 2,000 or 5,000 exercises, just like in, in math in school, Makes you a mathematician if you solve some thousands of math <laughs> exercises. And the same is in programming. If you want to learn programming, you should uh, write projects, you should follow tutorials, you should experience um, and extend your practical skills very, very long time. Basically, it needs 2,000 to 3,000 hours approximately of practice for starting a junior dev jobs. If you think that you can spend 20 hours or 200 or 500, it definitely will not be enough for a junior position. I'm sorry. And this is not the, the, the most bad news in the world because, um, for example, to become a medicine uh, doctor, uh, you, you may need uh, 10,000 hours. So it's <laughs> software development is quite easy to, to enter, but it's not like uh, to be a taxi driver. To be a taxi driver, you will need less time. Maybe 100 hours will be enough. So you can learn uh, in many places. Uh, maybe you know Soft Union, it's uh, end to end developer professions are one of the best places to start with uh, because they organize the learning in a very, very, very well uh, organized program, which includes everything from the starting to code until you reach your, uh, you create your portfolio, you learn everything from the concepts uh, to algorithmic thinking to software technologies. Many people start with technologies, for example, they start to learn Spring without uh, learning how to code and how to think algorithmically and how to solve problems, so this doesn't work. The next important thing is to create a portfolio of projects. This is very, very, very important because this is the only proof for your experience if you don't have a previous job. For example, if you spent last five years working for a big software company, you don't need a portfolio. You, you have an, a working experience, but if you don't have a working experience, employment experience, uh, your GitHub portfolio proves your experience. I will show you. So basically, you may uh, know that most job ads always require some kind of experience. So they put in the job ads, you need one or two years of experience to be a junior developer. And wannabe junior developers constantly are asking me, how do I, how can I have two years of experience to apply for a junior developer? This is a junior position, so I should start without experience. This is totally wrong. You may have experience before your first job. And 
following tutorials, creating projects, uh, solving uh, algorithmic uh, problems and everything you do as a sam sample projects at school, at your university, at SoftUni or at different coding academy gives you experience. So you just need to prove this experience. Proving your experience as a developer is your GitHub profile. I'll show you. The most important asset to start a developer job is your GitHub portfolio. That's it. The most important asset is your portfolio. It's not your uh, diplomas, certificates or uh, other things. Because everyone can get a diploma from a low quality university and this does not make him a good developer. So, the portfolio proves your experience and proves that you work consistently over the time, for example, in the last two years. So, I'll show you a sample profile of our student who is a starter. Starter means that he learned about programming uh, two years ago and he created a GitHub record two years ago. Later, he signed up for a kind of coding academy and he started to uh, make uh, contributions at GitHub. These uh, blocks are the days of the year, for example, 28th July, 29th July, etc. And the green are the days at which you have a proof that you have um, working, uh, have some experience working with some code. So this guy have uh, some Java profile. How he can prove, I don't know this, maybe his name is Yavor from, but I don't know him personally, I just found this uh, at, at GitHub. He has a Java OP. Shall you believe him? He has only one exercise here with some um, abstractions. So I may think that he has some skills. Oh, he has a, a certificate for Java OOP. So I can consider that he knows what is uh, inheritance, encapsulation, how to use unit testing, etc. But it would be better if the same guy had some more proof. For example, if you see, the, you can uh, find many uh, thousands of lines of codes written by him. If this profile is not fake, because this is also possible, which I don't recommend, uh, this guy proves that he has some experience with this. And he has also some, if you look at the repositories, some uh, projects uh, with uh, JavaScript, like you can see here and some projects with Spring, uh, for example. And here he has some kind of uh, project which uh, consists of MVC with some kind of services and models, etc. So looks like this guy has a proven tra track record of maybe one year, do you see, from August the last year until now, he has one year of experience. And this can be proven. So what happens with some more advanced uh, um, person? For the, this guy is also our former student. He has uh, a profile with some activity summaries. You can create with right, him. Everything is open source. It's easier. And he has a betting system where he proves that he knows very well ASP, ASP.NET uh, core with domain driven design, etc., 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 with these technologies. And he has a proof, not just a claim that he knows these technologies, he has a proof for these technologies. He have 266 commits on this project only. So 266 time, times his, this guy have created something and built something. Do you see August, August, October? So this guy have proven track record in creating projects and working uh, with uh, currently in his situation it's C sharp. And the previous guy was with Java. So your portfolio is your proof in front of the employers that you learn something. If your 
GitHub is empty, you cannot apply for a job. Remember this. It's a bad idea. It will be very, 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 very hard to find a job if you don't have a GitHub portfolio with code, with history, with commits, with... Uh, your GitHub portfolio should be green. Do you see? Green, 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 green. This is the best case scenario. Do you see? This guy started learning programming uh, four years ago and in two years he created a what? So I can believe that this guy has at least, at least, not necessarily, but le at least three years of experience. So this guy most probably works as a non-junior developer. I could find it uh, in LinkedIn if I search a little bit. I don't know who is he. Maybe he knows me, but I don't know her, him. But he is a software developer in uh, in a local company here and he has graduated and he has a lot of uh, certificates etc 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 and so this is what i recommend build a portfolio and this is your proof so when you create some exercise upload it into linkedin in github when you create a project you send it to github commit regularly so start building your github profile as early as possible constantly commit push your daily work if you don't like something you can remove it later but it's a good idea to have commits to have some history commit often this demonstrates that you write code the best way is to do this every day to to have a screenshot like this this is an excellent developer profile human resource experts and senior developers like this if i see this in someone's github profile i will not need uh, an interview or cv or cover letter i know that this guy works has the technical skills uh, to be a developer and only an interview to, to check his motivation will be required so you should document your projects very well Many people just uh, send some code into GitHub. In some cases, it's not their own code. But you can do like this. You can de describe, okay, this is the project. So what's this project about? This project is a JavaScript app, which does the following operations. It's written in Node.js with Express with Puck. And it has no database in this version. And you can see it, how it works here. So if someone visits your profile, he will be directly able to, to see, for example, Jack, uh, how this project works. And he will see how you program. And if you don't have a matching, you should have an error message here. So this is very uh, something very interesting to showcase your project. The next thing to do is to document if you have some kind of API. And obviously, to have a screenshots uh, is better than you if you don't have screenshots because screenshots shows you what you have created. So this is the best way to show your project and also you could upload it in some online editor like Repoit, for example, so people can look your code wife and see what you have created and they can play with it so your code should be uh, definitely in github so people can read it and see how you program what is your coding style do you follow clean code uh, principle etc but your project is should be uh, deployed as one click showcase one click showcase means that if i'm a, a person who wants to see what you have done i don't need to register and to have a complex password and to fill 25 fields during the registration no i should click login there should be a default login like guest with password guest and i should play with your work because it's best to show your code show your uh, project and have a showcase just like if you want to buy a car you don't want description you don't want uh, you want to go and to make a test drive right it's the best way 
you, you will want to have a good brochure where the technical descriptions of the cars are published. So I have already shown you how to do this. So I will move to the next step. The next step is to find junior developer positions. It's about researching the job market and decided, deciding where to apply. For example, uh, if you are a Java developer, let's get this, this guy here, Yavor. Yavor is one of big Java developer. So he learns Java object oriented programming. He learns Java advanced programming, like sets, data structures, uh, classes, functional programming, etc., etc., etc. So he later have learned, uh, obviously, Spring. And he has a proven track record that he has some knowledge in, in Spring, but it's not uh, quite uh, obvious here. But looks like he has a finished uh, Pathfinder, uh, some kind of practical project with Spring, with Maven, with uh, uh, many other things like JUnit, etc. So he want he might uh, need to find junior jobs which match his skills so i highly recommend for example if you use uh, linkedin you go to jobs at linkedin and you say java and your country of, of residence because it's most likely that you will start a job in your country and not remote but also uh, you can search for worldwide worldwide uh, for example and see 1.7 million positions and if you just uh, paste here java you most position will be senior team lead etc but so, because it, they are hard to fulfill so you need to type junior junior java works better so this is a sample uh, i'm sorry this is a sample uh, job advertisements, they need two years of experience with Java and Spring. How do you show it? Like this. One year, second year. This candidate, Kalin, matches his job requirement. It's obvious. Uh, one years of experience with React. You can, can check where you have it or not. You have all other requirements, etc. etc. Ju junior Java engineer. So this is... Uh, what they do but they need this is what they gain and they need spring and spring boot and restful apis and scrum jira intellij idea git if you want to apply for this job you should definitely have proof that you have this how you prove this it's quite easy how do i prove that i understand this if i have created this web service restful api and i have a project in my portfolio which clearly uh, proves that i have written this code it's obvious so you uh, should search for job positions like junior java or intern java which means internship uh, so this is for example uh, sap have a intern position intern at sap so this is what they work uh, expectations front end back end they need some uh, computer science degree or related discipline like for example the trainings at some code academy they need object oriented programming java do you see problem solving skills this is very 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 important if you have a problem to analyze it and to propose a solution to write the code to uh, debug it and to make it working so you can ask friends you can see the job portals but look at the junior positions and when you uh, do this you can also create a linkedin profile your LinkedIn profile should have your certificates, projects, education. If you don't have education, please first educate yourself, then apply for a job. If you don't have projects, please first create projects and then. If you don't have certificates, think about how you can get some certificates. There are lots of websites where you can get uh, certificates. You can ask for endorsements from your university professors or someone else you have worked with. but. Finding job position is uh, the easier um, 
the easier step because there are a lot of job positions. There are millions of developer job positions in the world and even remotely you can work from your country for United States, for example. So you may check career centers or any others, but finding jobs position is something easy. The hard work is the previous step to find, uh, to, to learn, for example, Java and create five Java projects and work one year as self-employed Java developer who is building his own GitHub portfolio. Unless you spend this one year, you will not match the requirements. And people sometimes say, oh, I know Java, why they don't want to hire me? Because you don't have a proof that you want Java, that you know Java. The proof is this one, these green things, if they are not fake, of course, this is the proof. This is the proof that his, this guy wants, knows programming. So, preparing to apply. Once you have found the job positions, once you are already a Java expert, for example, or JavaScript expert or QA automation expert, you want to apply. Many people apply like this. They uh, find the email of the HR and send CV uh, brackets to dot, dot X. They just attach a CV uh, without with an empty email and their sender is ASFD and this directly goes to the trash. So you don't need to do this. So ads you need to prepare for application and I will show you what does it mean. You, this means that you need to add the skills to match the job requirements. Every job position has a job requirements. For example, these job requirements uh, uh, are not clearly stated, but this is one of them. So you should have attended some kind of bootcamp. Very good understanding of programming fundamentals, object-oriented programming in Java. How do you prove this? Uh, you should have GitHub repositories with proven track record holding these assets. Uh, so you should first analyze the job market for junior positions. You should find what skills employers require. If you don't uh, have them, uh, you should add them to your portfolio. Typically, uh, for junior positions, there will be a repeating requirements. Things like coding, like object-oriented programming, like databases, like web technologies, like Git, like Docker, for example. And if you don't know what Git is, or what Docker is, you should definitely learn this. So you should just go here and here and here and here, etc., and see what they want. What are their requirements? Coding experience with Java or and also I recommend to apply for junior, not for interns, because for interns there will be uh, 50 applicants for one position or maybe 200. For junior, there will be less. Why? Because of the requirements. Do you see, for example, they need to know REST, to know Oracle, TeamCity, Sonar, OpenShift, Hibernate, Java, React. So, how many junior people know all these things? They are not much. And if you are one of them, you have a very good chance to start a job. So, you will need to add skills, analyze each specific job position and answer for yourself. Okay, I have similar experience, but I don't know OpenShift and Nginx and I should learn them before I apply or I don't like this company, so I will try the next one, for example, this one. So, you go through the uh, job advertisements and you see which ones you can match with your current skills or with extending your current skills. You will definitely need to extend your current skill to match the positions you apply for. So, what's missing in your skill set? It's very important that repeating things that development companies want and you don't have them in your skill set, in your portfolio, you should add them. How? 
you watch videos, you follow tutorials, you put everything in GitHub, you create some sample projects, you play with these technologies and you expand your portfolio. So if you want to add, for example, for example, if this guy wants to add Docker here, he should create a new repo and have a Docker based project here with documentation, with everything else. So for example, this project here, contact book proves that I have a good experience with Node.js, with Express, with JavaScript, with RESTful APIs, etc. But it says nothing about Docker, right? So if the company needs Docker, I should go in my portfolio and create another project which matches better this, for example. So this project is temperature server. It's about IoT. It looks like I know how to deal with Internet of Things apps and it's about end, uh, web uh, endpoint with HTTP and REST. Here I show that I know uh, C Sharp and how to draw at the screen. For example, I have created some kind of library, etc, etc, etc. Here I can show that I know what is testing, for example. Uh, here and I have also a mobile app and I can prove that I know how to write Android apps. But all your skills should be in your portfolio. Your CV, the resume should link these projects. So the only thing that companies care about is the experience level. So they, in the job requirements, that they need experience, 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 experience. This is what they, they do. You will find it everywhere. At least three years product experience, for example. This is not for junior developer, but basically you should find what companies want. And this is experience. How you prove experience? By creating projects, etc. So I will already show you if you take the, um, the job ad and if it is well written like this, they say you should have two years of experience with Java Spring and Hibernate. So if you have spent last of your two years learning Java and writing sample projects and creating your portfolio, you will match this. If you don't have React, you either should spend uh, one month to learn it or you should try the other job, the other job offer. And these are some easier things. If you, you either know JUnit or Mokito, for example, or you should learn it. So this is how it works. How do I prove that I know Java? I have a portfolio with some projects with Java. It's obvious that if I have written all of this code, I know Java. How could I write? write it otherwise. So how do, does this guy prove that he knows Spring? For example, he proves that he knows Spring by developing this project, which is based on, on Java, on Spring MVC, on some, some uh, services with some unit tests, etc., etc., etc. So it's obvious that if he is the, the author of this code, he knows Spring but he doesn't know Mojito. So how to learn Mojito? First, research what is this if you don't know it and try to find a tutorial about Mojito. For example, we can find a getting starting with Mojito. We can follow these examples and create something uh, for our portfolio and definitely you should uh, put it in GitHub. And when you apply for this job, you will say, uh, Hey, please, uh, I want to write, um, I want to apply for a job. I have little experience uh, with Mukito, with Java, with Spring, Hibernate, and React. I have more experience with MySQL and not much with Oracle, but I want to learn it. And I will learn it fast because I'm very good at MySQL. This is my, uh, these are my MySQL projects. So you should always have not only claim, but claim with a proof. The claim is at my CV, I put that I know Java. Uh, the proof is I have uh, worked 
three years on a salary in a Java development professional company. This one kind of proof. But if you are junior, you will use the other proof. The, the other proof is that you will uh, you have a portfolio and you have proven track record that you have spent three months in working with Spring, for example, or more. So Docker is another uh, thing that you should either know it, either you don't want to learn it and you go at the next possible job offer, or the best thing is to learn Docker and put a project related to Docker in your portfolio. So, this is one of the easiest steps. If you have fulfilled the previous steps, the job application is not complex. A job application for a tech position should always consists of the following assets. The first is the email application message. It should be something like, dear HR manager or dear Mr. Todorov, he's the, the, the person who have posted the, the job offer. I would like to apply for a junior Java developer in, for example, VMware uh, Austria, uh, because I have uh, related experience to what you want and I have graduated this and this and this and I have certificates like this. My portfolio projects which match your experience, uh, your requirements as, as follows. And you get a first link with some uh, one sentence description, another link, another link, another link. And these links and projects should match the requirements. So if the requirements are like this, for example, uh, OMIO or uh, some uh, MVP or whatever, uh, le let's see something more clear, iOS, Android, etc. You put projects to match these words because HRs want to see that the candidate has relevant experience. This is what they matter. They care about experience, not that you have passed some course. Yes, passed some course or certificate, is a, some kind of proof that you know something. Uh, putting something in your CV is, has no, sp no proofs and it's not good. So the resume is another asset you should provide and the resume basically describes and matches your portfolio. The resume is just a text format for your GitHub profile, but the main assets are your projects. So if you claim that you uh, know uh, how to deal with functional, uh, functional programming languages, your GitHub portfolio should have a project with this. So you can have a sentence like my resume is attached or is available online somewhere, etc. And you may need a cover letter or if you even they if they don't require a cover letter, you should have a, some kind of cover letter. This is a motivational uh, text which says, hey, I like your company very much. I like, for example, VMware, Austria or uh, SAP very much because they are leader in this, 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 this. And I can put my skills uh, here in action and I have relevant experience and I will really add a value to you. So you can find how to prepare carefully, but job applications should be carefully prepared. You should, uh, they should be always be individual. If you copy paste a job application, it is guaranteed that you will fail. Absolutely guaranteed. Never do this. Never copy paste your cover letter, application message, CV, etc. And even bad, but more bad thing is to copy the CV and cover letter from a friend. Never do this. This is just like copy your love letters to your girl, girl and send them to your friend. This doesn't work. It's personal. So you should always slightly adjust your CV and uh, for the target position and write a cover letter from scratch for each position you apply. So if someone tells me I apply for 10 uh, position today, it's impossible. He did not a good job. If he did a good job, he would apply to one or two position for one day or maybe one position per week. Because if you put enough refer and if you apply carefully, you will do it. So writing a technical CV and cover letter, you can find guides in internet. I will not show you how to search in internet and it's not my objective. My objective is that your portfolio, portfolio of projects uh, where you demonstrate two years of experience is the heart of your job application and job uh, position. So 
The next final thing is the job interview. I will not talk much on it because 95% of candidates never get to a job interview. So you should focus on preparations. And if you have the chance to have a job interview, you should do the best practices described in internet. Companies, technologies, typical questions, etc. Looks like I have five more minutes. So I'm very happy to answer your questions. Looks like. Uh, so do you have questions here? Nothing. Wow. Martin, good to see. Copying CV like duplicating a love letter yeah yeah this is the same it, it's impossible it's impossible because if you don't have a personal atta attention to a certain girl or a certain company uh, they will just uh, not consider you seriously so wow why we don't have questions please ask i'm not sure that you you can ask but uh, okay so Guys, I just want, I will return back to my slides, but uh, in, in, in case you want to, to learn more, you can follow my Code with Nakov YouTube channel. I have, I publish regularly, mostly in English, a lot of videos on, for example, this is a tutorial, how to build a JavaScript and not JS uh, URL shortener app, where you, you enter a long URL and it's get shortened, but it's step by step. If you follow this, you will have one more project in your, uh, in your uh, portfolio. So mm, invest in yourself, invest not in the job interview. Okay, interview questions uh, and other tips are important, but they are related only to 5% of the people. So it's not it's not interesting. This this one it's not it's not interesting. So ah, I have what is the average sal salary of junior developer? This depends on the country. For example, in Bulgaria, it could be something like uh, junior for a junior position. It could be, for example, six hundred euro net. For example, this is an entry level. And my recommendation is that for your first job don't ask for big salary your important thing is to start if you have one year of experience you can change your job and find a better salary but for the first job don't do it i like the attitude of talking the application very seriously with a lot of preparation i definitely recommend this because i i have seen many times how people try to copy paste the, the application and to apply to as much positions as possible this is just like uh, you want to have a girlfriend and you want to uh, date as much uh, people as possible and you you just say hi hi and you want these girls to, to, to respond if you don't put some effort if you don't uh, show personal attention it's unlikely that you they will respond, especially if they have a bigger expectations than you. So what I learned is that it's highly important why specific company and role is interesting for you. Yes, you should show motivation because if you are at the other side, if you are a, a manager who wants to hire people for their team, what kind of profile you will want to hire? People who really care about you, about the company, about the project, or, or people who just want a job. It's the same if you want to have a girlfriend. So you should tell, please come to be with me because I have never, uh, I don't have love in my wife, please enter. This is the first approach. And the second is, uh, I like you very much because you are this and this and this and this. I have saw you this here and here. I found that you have this, this, this. And I myself, I'm very careful. I'm very uh, this and this and this. So I want you personally and I know your interests, etc. So personal attention have a better chance that please hire me. I need a job. You need a job, but people need a person who does the job so you should be as close as possible to the requirements and the requirements are usually very well stated spring spring boot restful apis uh tested 
apps and documented software. How you prove this, for example? Well-tested and well-documented software. If, you, if your projects in your GitHub profile are well-tested and well-documented, well, like this one, you will match this requirement. If you have just new project brackets too, it's not the match. Okay, so uh, the passion could compensate the lack of current knowledge, right? Sure, the passion is one of the important things, but they should always be in combination. People, uh, employers want passionate people who want to learn, who want to develop themselves, who will stay whole the night if they have a bug to fix it. This is a passion. This is a motivation. Uh, but together with initial skills and matching the requirements. So you should do your best to match the requirements, to demonstrate passion at an interview. How you demonstrate your passion? If you are passionate about flying, you, you will fly. If you are passionate about dancing, you should have a clips in YouTube how you dance, right? If you are passionate about coding, you should have GitHub profile showing that you have passion. So passion can be shown with assets, with cover letter, with well-prepared CV, with very well-prepared uh, GitHub projects, etc., etc., etc. So, okay, I think my time has uh, ended. So, guys, I, I'm really happy that uh, I can share this with you. And if you stole, follow the steps, uh, in one, two or three years, you will start a developer jobs. I cannot uh, tell you that this will happen in one month. It's impossible. Our profession is complex, needs times, but uh, good luck. Put effort, invest in yourself, all this my uh, recommendations, these steps, and you will do it. It takes one, two, three years, depends on how intensively you invest in yourself, and this works. Okay, so goodbye and good work. I hope this is uh, interesting for you.